everybody. How y'all doing tonight? My name is Matt Kern, and I'm honored to have Ryan Lowe and Josh Evans tonight with me. How are y'all doing tonight, guys? Awesome. Doing great. Doing great. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about the Entrepreneurs Unite event that we have coming up, but really we're going to talk more about what you guys do. And you guys are both uh, authors, motivational speakers. Uh, You've both done TED Talks, so you've been out there, uh, do a lot of corporate training. So why don't we do this? Let's start with Ryan. And Ryan, just tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about where you're from, and a little bit about what you do. And then we're going to dive in through the next hour a little bit more. Very cool. Uh, well, my name is Ryan Lowe. I'm a motivational speaker, sales trainer, TEDx speaker, and author. Uh, I live down here in the New Orleans area in Covington, Louisiana, travel all over the world doing motivational talks for conferences, conventions, things of that nature. Uh, now, probably more virtual now, but uh, my main passion is to go in organizations and work with their leadership, their sales team, and their customer service teams by doing trainings and coaching and um, just a lot of fun. I, uh, you know, worked for Brian Tracy. That's how I got in the business and uh, been doing it for over 15 years now. So, oh. yeah, that's really cool that you've been out there and you've been making things happen. And we're going to really get into your book and, and talk about not just your book, but just how you do it, your training and what you end up doing. Um, so it's really impressive. Uh, Josh, let's hear from you. So exactly what Ryan just said. No, I'm just kidding. That's right. All right, <laughs> so uh, I, I do a lot of motivational speaking as well to large associations, large organizations, and then a lot of companies hire me to come in. So clients like ExxonMobil or Raytheon or Baker Hughes or GE or uh, American Express, they, they bring me in to help get their teams re-engaged in the work that they're doing. So I do a lot of uh, company culture consulting as well. And then I also do executive public speaking coaching for uh, people that are at a high level within their career and they want a way in which they can be a compelling speaker. And so I, I do that too. Um, yeah, there you go. And so, and I'm not a TEDx speaker. Ryan's a TEDx speaker. I'm a TEDx producer. So I produce uh, yeah. TEDx events in my hometown. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. So it's a little bit different, but still the same. Yeah. Well, I brought Ryan in to speak at our TEDx. Yeah. And I'm yeah. trying to bribe, I'm trying to bribe you to bring me in. So let me well, know. Me on your podcast. Check. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Didn't you know my <laughs> podcast and there should be a check in the mail. It's like a stimulus check, you know? So when that comes in, just let me Don't know. Don't say and, uh, that. Like they're going to yank my license. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Don't that's a joke. Bribes. I did not mean that. I apologize. Uh, so let's, let's jump in and let's talk a little bit more about, um, entrepreneurship, right? Because the, the event that you guys are both keynote speakers for, it's going to be May 4th, 5th and 6th has to do with entrepreneurs. And so I know both of you do a lot of talking and coaching and teaching uh, for entrepreneurs. And this is great. So tell me a little bit about what your opinions are and what your thoughts are and what people need to do to be successful entrepreneurs. I'll let Ryan go first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, are you being specific in more of the the speaking world or just entrepreneurs? Yeah, let's just talk. Let's talk. Let's talk uh, in general. Entrepreneurs, like uh, in general, like if you were going out and talking to a group of entrepreneurs and they were getting started, what would you tell them? How would you tell them um, to get started and some of the things that they need to do? I think some of the things to do is before I jump into anything, I talk to other entrepreneurs like you know i've got other friends that you know own businesses uh, all different types of businesses around the country that you know i've you know made friends with and i, I kind of one of the things i always do is go to someone that's been successful as an entrepreneur yeah. what did they do and you know if, if it's you have to go take classes i've got friends of mine that that still go take classes at local universities they learn more you know different parts of i've got a marketing degree and okay. I, I always laugh because I think about about those um, those times and you know different classes that I was bored, you know, like uh, accounting and things of that nature. And to be honest with you, I wish I would have paid a little bit more attention in those those uh, those uh, classes. And when I, I make light of that because when you are when you are an entrepreneur, there's so many different aspects of it, so many uh, you know so many dishes in the air, you know, spinning yeah. at one time when you're an entrepreneur. And but my biggest thing is education. I think by going to people that have has you know that have has gone through it. What did they do? How did they become successful? Just like I was talking to you about my starting up my podcast. Yeah. I'm going to go to someone like yourself and say, Hey, what did you do? Because I don't want to waste time. Time is yeah. valuable, 
if somebody, I have people come to me all the time and ask me about motivational speaking, sales training, all of the different things that I've done. How did I get into it? What would you recommend? And some of the things I, number one thing I recommend is finding a mentor, finding yeah. someone. I've got a friend of mine that that lives five minutes away from me. He's been a motivational yeah. speaker close to 40 years now, uh, certified speaking professional, traveled all over the world, doing speaking and things of that nature. And I make sure that I sit down with him. I would imagine at least two or three times a month just to pick his brain. And, you know, and I'll tell you, it saved me a lot of time and, and, and headache when I had issues pop up and, you know, I've got other friends too that I can go to and say, Hey, have you ever been in this situation? Or, Hey, what do you think about this? Or, Hey, have you ever done this before? And it saved me a ton of time. So I think being able, always having that, I think the number one thing is always just having that, that idea that you're always learning. That there's no yeah. end to the learning of being an entrepreneur. Yeah, and absolutely. And Josh, we'll jump to you on that. But but both of you, basically, y'all are out there as motivational speakers and as uh, trainers and as entrepreneurs yourself, right? So talk a little bit about your journey about getting started. How did you do it? And, you know, how did you know, how did you get to the point where you're at? Because I agree with you 100 percent, Ryan, you got to find a mentor, right? You got to find somebody in both basically with what you guys have both done by being authors, by being teachers, is you are mentors, right? And you can be a mentor and reach out to so many ways and so many people can learn from you. And that, again, the reason why we're doing this podcast and doing the event is so people can learn from you. You know, I think that, that Ryan's absolutely right. The amount of knowledge that you can gain from having people that have gone through the experience is so immense. And so knowledge is a huge part of entrepreneurialism. But as we all know, just in the past few months, the ability to adapt quickly to our environment, mm -hmm. to change and to evolve is just so important as an entrepreneur. And this is a problem that I found early on when, when I first started my business is I was a bit too set in my ways, right? And I, I being when you're set in stone with this is how I'm going to do it, this is what I'm going to, to, to sell or this is what I'm going to, to do as a service to the world. The problem is, is that you've closed yourself off to other opportunities. And so something I need, I, I really, I, and I try to tell this to every other entrepreneur that I talk to, especially people that are just starting out, you have to be flexible. You have to be willing to pivot. So early on, uh, when I first started my business, I had to pivot several times right before I started finding that that path of least resistance. And because yeah. if you're not willing to adapt to what the environment is willing to pay you to do, then you're yeah. not going to be nearly as successful as you could be. And one of the best ways I found of doing that is not only uh, developing mentors, just like Ryan said, um, but reading as much as you can and learning and staying up up to date on what trends are going on right now. And as Ryan was talking about a lot, I mean, I do a lot of vert or live events and now I've, I've quickly had to transition to virtual events. Yeah. Luckily, I'd, I'd already been doing some, so it wasn't that difficult. But yeah. knowing where the world is headed and it's not always easy to, to look into the future, right? Nobody has that crystal ball. But as an entrepreneur, you're kind of forced to be thinking about what what if something tragic happens or what if there is a pandemic or what what if. And those what ifs are those, those things that keep you awake as an entrepreneur, but they're also yeah. those things that will keep you afloat as long as you're looking ahead towards them. And so it's, it's a uh, very proactive problem-solving technique that I feel that I, I try to use as much as possible. Um, I'm not always as quick um, as I should be to adapt to things, but I think that that... that ability to pivot and to evolve quickly really helps an entrepreneur um, be head and shoulders above one of their competitors. Yeah. And so th that's one of the things. Um, and the next thing that I would say, and this is just, just me, um, I think the best way an entrepreneur can take what they have to offer the world, right? Whatever their product or service or thing is, um, if they can develop a compelling story about it, right? And actually yeah. get somebody to, to see themselves as the hero. And that's... And, Therein lies one of the biggest problems. I think a lot of us, especially as entrepreneurs, we want to be the hero to somebody else's business or to some other yeah. consumer. I want to solve their problems. We want to be seen as Absolutely. King Arthur. But the problem is, yeah. is we, we can't be Obi-Wan Kenobi to everybody, right? What we need yeah. to be, or we Absolutely. can't be, I'm sorry, we can't be Luke Skywalker to everybody. What we need to be is that person that's guiding the people that are buying yeah. our stuff, right? Because then they look at you as, okay, you're, you're giving me knowledge, right? You're that, you're Gandalf. And I and they're Frodo. Yeah. That's that's what you need to yeah. try and be because if if you can lead them down the path, then they're the ones making the decisions using your guidance. Absolutely. And the second, yeah, and the second you become a some sort of a, I'll say, um, I don't know what, what's the best word for it, a, more of an advisor than a salesperson, yeah. right, or an entrepreneur. The second you're an advisor in their life, they're more likely to listen to what you have to say and to purchase your products or services. And so that's why I think yeah. stories are probably one of the most valuable things you can do to actually take your stuff to market. Yeah, absolutely. And I couldn't agree with you more. Like, well, let's talk about this. Nobody saw 
COVID-19 coming. Nobody saw this getting ready to happen, right? And so there has been a big pivot that people have had to take. And, you know, and so you've had to look for different ways to do business. You have to get out there. You have to communicate with people. You have to bring people in. And everybody's doing it right now, right? Um, I couldn't agree with you more on on the story because, you know, I look at, um, luckily enough, you could say for, you know, the last 10 years, I've been building convened communities, which is a platform where people can come in, share their experience and knowledge, share their stories and and grow through selling their content and just uh, communicating and collaborating, right? Well, what's everybody trying to do right now? Everybody's trying to communicate, collaborate in one spot and trying to sell their stuff. And so, um, you know, that is just what it is, but it's about, you know, uh, we're going to get into this and we'll talk about it more because I think both of you guys, when you go out and you, and you speak, you have compelling stories, right? That you convey to your audience. So talk about that a little bit, Ryan. I mean, when you're talking about uh, get off your attitude, you're you're doing that through telling stories and talking about a positive message. So talk a little bit about that and why that's so important. Um, I mean, one of the things that having the compelling story, you've got to be able. One thing you have to be able to uh, with any organization um, understand what they're going through. Uh, you've got to understand what their what their you know their major issues are. If it's if they're going through change, if it's going through leadership change, if it's going through uh, you know firing or whatever it may be, every, there's always an issue. Every organization I've ever worked with, there's always either you know they need some oxygen put into the company where you know their culture is negative, or that's mostly what I deal with, and that's what Josh yeah. deals with. Josh and I run pretty much the same. Uh, gambit when it comes to a lot of these organizations, when we talk about culture, talk about attitude, talk about how to deal with those things. I mean, some of the things I, I just share personal stories is, you know, I lost a, a multi-million dollar insurance business years ago, right before I started Get Off Your Attitude. Uh, that was a very hard thing. When I was in high school, I was, I got shot with a 12 gauge shotgun. And um, that was a very hard thing to go through. So um, really, yeah, and <laughs> I, I told you, I told you, I was gonna drop, drop one on you, man. Right, right, in the middle of this, right in the middle of this, man. <laughs> um, yeah. So there's a lot of things that I've been through, and you know, when you're going through, you know, I'll be honest with you, it sucks. But after you come out of it, it's that's where the learning starts, and that's when I was able to write my book and and be able to not really tell people to get off their attitude, but to really look inside and say, you know. Just like right now, I coach people all around the country. I've got clients that I talk to. And one of the biggest things I've been, you know, really sharing with them, even myself, like we talked about, uh, this is a very weird time we're going through right now. I mean, we've got people all around the world, like the lady from South Africa. I, I coach yeah. people in California to, to New York, to Atlanta, you name it. And we're all stuck at home right now. And it's just the weirdest thing to put your wrap your head around. But the one thing... We can't control the weather. We can't control the virus. We can't control what the government's doing, but we can't control turning on that TV. We can't control on uh, turning off that TV, as I would say, with the negativity and getting into books, getting into podcasts, getting into getting into positive habits. And that's what I've, I've been sharing with people. What can we do with the time that we have? Because one thing I get from everyone when I talk to them uh, and coach and, and train, well, I don't have time to do that. I don't have time to read. Even myself, sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't have time to read. Now I've gone through two or three books in the past several weeks that I was trying to get to. But yeah. you're, but I think, though, that what Josh and I do, you know, as a motivational speaker, it's not just, oh, let's motivate, get rah-rah, and let them walk out the door. I've learned that you tell a really good story that really connects Yes, somebody absolutely. that go, gosh, you know, Josh went through that. Wow. Ryan went through that. Wow. Matthew went through that. And when you tell that story and you connect with them, there's so many ways that you can connect with people. Uh, I tell stories about my grandmother growing up in New Orleans. I tell stories about, like I said, my business. I tell sales experiences, things of that nature. Not to like just go, hey, look at me. It's more of I know what you're going through. I've been there losing a business. Yeah. I've been there when I had no sales, nobody coming through the door couldn't get anybody on the phone, things of that nature. And, um, and I think that, that, that really helps people. I think yeah. that when you can get down to their level and, and help understand and, uh, and all of you guys as well, I mean, we've had our highs, 
I've got stories when I've hit my highs and I've got stories when I've hit my lows. So, Definitely. you know, uh, once you learn that life is not a constant, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's so many moving parts and it's just always up and down, but you, yeah. you got to learn how to keep the right attitude when things are great and when things aren't great. Yeah, absolutely. I always say that, you know, we do have stories. We all have a story. Everybody has a story, but we all have stories that interconnect. And I don't care who you are, we can find ways to connect our stories to others. That's one of the things, and I'll talk about mine after you, uh, Josh, but I'll give you a little bit about my story and where all this came from and convene came from. But you, we can connect and we can, we can help each other out through our story. So talk a little bit about storytelling, because I know that's one of your main things that you teach and you talk about. Absolutely. And uh, stories are so immensely important. And it's not necessarily about making it the most gut wrenching or emotional story, though. Emotions are great because people make decisions based on emotions. They don't make decisions yeah. based on facts. They make decisions based on emotion and then they justify with facts. But um, a good storyteller and a good entrepreneur who has a compelling story, what, what, what they learn to do is take something abstract, take a story that is an experience in your life, because automatically it's going to be very authentic because it happened to you. Right? But take some sort of story Right. Walk somebody through a story because people love stories. Otherwise, you know, Netflix yeah. would be out of business because everybody's on there to yeah, look at the stories. Um, but everybody loves the story. And so if you can get them into the story, right, once you step out of the story, stop and then tell them what they just learned from that story. And so I'll give you a quick. This is a ridiculous story. It's nowhere near as um, crazy as, as Ryan's getting shot in the chest with a 12 gauge. <laughs> I've heard the story. It's a good story. But um, yeah. so the other day I, I'm sitting in my dining room and I hear a chair screeching across my kitchen floor and it's just screeching across and here i know what's going on it's my five-year-old and he's going for the pantry and the only thing he needs a chair to reach in the pantry or stuff he probably shouldn't be going after and so like i peek around the corner and like i watch him like positioning the chair and like he stands up and i walk up there and i go hey luke what are you doing and he turns around and he's holding this bag of marshmallows and he's looking me dead in the eye and it's like 6 30 in the morning he can't be having marshmallows yeah. at 6 30 in the morning <laughs> So I have to make a choice, right? Man, we, we can't have marshmallows right now. Like You just can't do it. And, and the reason, and, and there's a ridiculous story. Yeah, it's about my five-year-old. People are yeah. going to remember like the kid with the marshmallows like caught in the headlights like you caught me, dad. Yeah. But I use this story when literally speaking with executives, telling them like, look, the behavior that we tolerate becomes the behavior that we endorse in our organizations. So if I were to let him have a marshmallow right now, guess what? Tomorrow morning, he's going to go back for the marshmallows. If you let one of yeah. your employees talk down to somebody else that works in your organization, guess what they're going to do tomorrow, right? Or yeah. if you allow somebody to be late to your meeting, or if you allow somebody to speak poorly about a coworker or to attack a client, any of those sorts of things, it's going to affect everything else. And so literally the, the, the behavior that we tolerate becomes behavior that we endorse. And so I yeah. use little stories like that. And it's, it's just, while it's just a snippet, it pulls people into it. But the statistics yeah. show that if you were to give somebody literally a statistic, they're only like, there's only 12% of people that will remember that statistic. But if you give no, somebody a story, over 61% of people will remember a story. That's why stories are so powerful. That's why there's literally stories yeah. that have lasted millennia. Right. Like yeah. the Odyssey right. and Homer, like it's the last the millennia because it's a story that people can retell and yeah. maintain the, those core uh, ideas, principles and lessons. Yeah, absolutely. And if, and Matt, so, if, 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 Matt, if I can interject real qu one quick thing sure. that Josh just reminded me. He's going to he's going to tell the shotgun story and ruin my marshmallow <laughs> story. No, my my mentor had told me years ago that one of the things that stories do, he said he calls it the secondary audience. Yeah. And if you ever think about this, and Josh can tell you, we, we Josh and I have been on a tour uh, with a, a conference years ago where we traveled all around the country and did numerous of these, these numerous big conferences. So I'm sure this happened to Josh there and before as well. But when you tell a story, if I tell a story about my grandmother, if I tell a story about my five-year-old, if I tell a story about something that went through me, I mean, I've actually had people walk up to me and go, I, I got shot too. Like literally, yeah. they were like, yeah, I got shot when I, yeah. And so what a story does, it triggers a memory it and does. it makes them connect. And I've had more people come to me after like, oh, you know, I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. You know, I yeah. spent a lot of time with my grandfather and you brought up, oh, you brought up New Orleans. Oh my God, I'm, you know, I'm trying to marshmallow oh, once. <laughs> yeah. Or I mean, yeah. but I mean, people I, I had a marshmallow. Like, but what's funny is, is that when he's telling the five, his story about the five-year-old, I'm thinking about mine. She's yes, yeah, I, I can hear her in the middle of the night opening up the door, 
and you know I, I hear stuff falling you know, yeah. in the middle of the night. I'm like, what is that? Yeah, and it's her. You know, like like have like getting caught. You know, with the light yeah. on. I'm like, oh, geez. I'm, so that yeah. that's the great thing about stories, and I think that's what people can walk away from is that. Um, uh, and I think it was Maya Angelou that said, you know, it's not what you tell them, you know, or or, or how you make them feel. It's how how yeah, how, it's not what you tell them, but it's how you make them feel when yeah, they walk absolutely. away. And when they walk yeah. away and they can say, you know what, you know, I've had people tell, I, I tell people all the time, I'm no different than anyone on this call or anyone in this world. But if I can do it, you definitely can go do something, absolutely. buy a book, do whatever you want to go do. So I think that kind of helps relate with people. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll tell you all a story. You ready? Love to so I get asked, yeah, I get asked all He's the time. About a helicopter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so so it is about a helicopter. So people ask me all the time, "Hey, where did this concept of convene come from? You know, where does where does this concept of of sharing your experience and knowledge and sharing your lessons learned and sharing your stories come from?" And and so this is the story. I'll give you the quick. I'll give you the synopsis because if you ever hear me speak, I go into the whole thing, and it really. Um, it, th this is the night. So it was July 9th, 2001. And I was getting ready to go fly a section of helicopters, that helicopter right by me, see it right there, the CH-46 Echo. Um, I walked in to sign for the aircraft. And when I walked in, my combat crew chief was standing there signing off another aircraft safe for flight. So this guy was the guy that I flew 90% of my flights with. I flew all the time with him. And he was signing off another book and I said, bro, why aren't we flying together? And he said, well, we're not going to fly together tonight, but we're going to fly together tomorrow night. So fast forward about an hour later, we're out there and we're flying and my aircraft had a little bit of an issue. So we had landed, we were doing practice shipboard landing. We had landing on the forward of what's called, what's called the LHA deck. It was a uh, practice shipboard landing on the side of the New River in North Carolina. And we're talking about what's going on. And the gunny in the back says, hey, sir, they're on downwind. I'm like, okay, good to go. So we continue to teach because I'm in teaching mode. I'm teaching the, the co-pilot how to land at night because we were getting ready to deploy and go out on the ship. So we're sitting there talking and I, we finally get done. And I'm like, hey, uh, gunny, can we lift? He goes, sir, they're not there. And he said, did they call the party? And meaning, did they leave? And I said, no. Gunny and, and the new sergeant that was flying with us that night, he sticks his head out of the window and he goes, he goes, what do you mean, Gunny? Aircraft don't just appear. And he goes, sir, are there rocks in this water? No, there's not rocks in the water. Sir, they're in the water. Come up now. So we pop up, we kick the tail around, and we look, and there they were. They had flown the aircraft straight down into the water. All right. So, again, what was just a regular flight just turned out to be one of the most horrible nights of my life, right? Because now I've gone from being in a training mode to being in a, a on-team commander mode, right? in a recovery mode, right? We see one head pop up. We see two head pops up. Well, there's five people in the aircraft. Where's the other three, right? So now we're in that recovery. We need to get in. They asked me to pull into a hover and let them jump out of the aircraft to go into the water. Well, the aircraft is sticking out of the water, so that's not a good idea. I don't want to do that because then we'll end up in the water right beside them. So that's a bad thing. So what ends up happening is a 12 second human error and so what I, what I teach and I talk about a lot is we learn through our experience and knowledge we learn through our mistakes we learn through our successes and in those mistakes and those successes how others can learn too well what ended up happening is they turned the red cockpit dome light on which they were flying night vision goggles which made their night vision goggles so you can't see out but you can still fly the helicopter right but nobody flew the helicopter everybody went to turn the red cockpit dome light so when they went to red, turn the red cockpit dome light, they flew the helicopter straight into the water. So this night, we lost three Marines. We lost one of these Marines, which was my combat crew chief, who's one of my best friends in the world. Now, the hard part for me was um, I find out a day and a half later that that same mishap, that same causal factor for a crash had happened a year and a half prior. But they didn't share that experience. They didn't share that story. They kept it inside of their squadron. So when I go out and I talk and I speak and I teach at corporations, I'm like, you have to talk. You have to communicate. You have to share your stories, the good, the bad, the ugly. People have to learn from them, right? Because you can't keep the secret because if we could have made a six cent change, a change of a bolt, that red light could have not come on. It would not, it was impossible to come on. And because we didn't make that, we didn't share that story, we lost three good Marines that night.
And that's a horrible story, the way to start, but it's a, it, it's a story that engages with people and it mm-hmm. lets them know we have to mm-hmm. talk, we have to communicate, we have to share our stories. So I'm a counselor, you know, I have my degree in counseling and, and uh, a bunch of, you know, I help people in their marriages. I help people in their parenting. I help people in, you know, all kinds of walks of life. It doesn't matter because I teach people what you're talking about, you know? Share your experience and knowledge. Share your stories for the good of others. That's almost like getting shot with a 12-gauge shotgun. I have to stop saying <laughs> anything about the stupid marshmallows now. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I love marshmallows, Josh. I love marshmallows and pizza. You know, so but the marshmallow is a good story, you know, because it's true. Right. It's Absolutely. a great story. And anybody well, it is, isn't too lighthearted, obviously, for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I, I will say this. I will say this. The loss of him, we talk, you know, every July 9th, it start, we start talking as a squadron, all my peers. And at the loss of uh, Clark Beatty, it, it still resonates today, and it is still so important to everybody that was there. So, um, you know, it, it's still, it's not meant to be a bad story because I, I think he looks down. And I think he's proud of what we're all, a bunch of us are still accomplishing, you know, and, and, and I really mean that. So let's get back to a positive note, you know, now that, now that I took us down to, well, now that Ryan started with getting shot and uh, you tried to bring it up with marshmallows and then I took it down, you know, the path of losing three Marines. So uh, you overcorrected. About, <laughs> I did. I did. You're right. But, well, let's talk about positive leadership, right? And how important that is in corporations. I'll tell you. Real quick, um, that is, I think that is the number one detriment, and you guys speak in this world, but I think uh, setting the stage and being a positive leader can either make or break your corporation. So both of y'all talk about that because I've seen it go both ways for companies. Well, and I think absolutely right now, especially because we're we're in a very challenging time, right? It's literally unprecedented in the history of mankind, especially in the history of the internet, right? Like I, I was not yeah. around during 1920 when the Spanish flu swept the world, right? So yeah. this is unprecedented in um, the type of environment we're in. And so right now for leadership, the main goal for them needs to be something where they're, they're leading from a place of not just positive because you do need to be optimistic, right? That we're going to get to the other side of this because nobody yeah. follows anybody. It's like, Hey, let's, let's run to our death or let's run to, you know, no jobs. Yeah. No, you have to have some sort of optimistic perspective. But I think what the main thing that people need is if you're a leader in any sort of leadership role, right? Whether you're leading your family, leading a group of friends, leading a prayer group, leading a church or a business, I don't care what it is. If you're any sort of leader, the thing that everybody below you needs right because they're all searching for something right now they need reassurance yeah and they need compassion and i got a great little story to go with this one too so oh, yeah yeah you love this <laughs> so, lighthearted again so yeah. um it was i don't i remember the date because it was actually his birthday my three-year-old on yeah. on march 23rd or 24th sorry um north <laughs> march 23rd my wife's not watching this it's fine march 23rd <laughs> Um, right, right after this, this pandemic had started, um, my, my three-year-old woke up from the middle of the night with a nightmare, right? Like just, you could just see the terror in his yeah. eyes, tears streaming down his face. And I walk up to him and, 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 he, and he's just daddy, you know, and I, you pick him up and in that moment, what does he need from me? Right. In that moment, what is my, my very scared, very worried three-year-old need? Does he need me to like go over like the history of nightmares or like, what yeah. are the hot spots of nightmares within the U S right now? Or, you know, what are the causes of nightmares? Where are the future? Everybody's scared. Gonna... Yeah. Everybody's does, does, scared is that, right is now. Is that what he needs right now? <laughs> Absolutely not. There's one thing he needs right now, right? The one thing he needs is reassurance. Right. He needs yeah. a hug, right? He needs, he needs compassion. And I think that yeah. every leader right now, everyone. And even if you're not like leading a team, if you're leading a group of customers that are looking to you, everybody right now, what they need from you is compassion and they need reassurance and and, and they need honesty. That's what they want yeah. from you. That's what they desire. And, and everybody is, is, is feeling more fearful and more worrisome. And you have the opportunity in every single interaction with another human being, you have the opportunity to make their day a bit brighter or a bit worse. You can put them more at yeah. ease or you can make them more uneasy. And we wield an immense power. And a lot of people don't realize that. But in every single interaction that we have, we need to take it as our responsibility yeah. to make their day a bit better. 
And you can, if, if you, if you walk into a conversation with that intention, it's easy to make the other person walk away a tiny bit happier. It really is. Yeah, um, absolutely. So yeah, that's what I think about that. So go so ahead, Ryan, Ryan, Trump that story. Talk, yeah. But you talk about one of the things you talk about is the power of a smile, right? The power of positive right. leadership. So talk about that a little bit and, and how you relate that. Um, well, one of the story. things that, yeah, I mean, one of, the, um, one of the things is, is that is, is how do we respond to this? That's the number one thing. Um, in my book, I talk about how children react, adults respond. And one of the things that uh, you can respond in a positive manner with a smile. Um, yeah. And what I mean by that is um, you ever notice that a lot of great leaders just have that assurance. They have that confidence yeah. when they go through things of this nature. You can go back. I mean, people are going back to Winston Churchill. They're going back to FDR. They're going back to uh, a lot of leaders back to our time that have been through war. They've been through epidemics or pandemics. They've been through all these different things. And so you go back and you look at someone that says, I've got this, but also has the ability to share that with their teams, their company, their organization, their family, whoever it may be. And the issue is, is that when you're going through, you know, it's almost like we're in a fog right now. Yeah. And the one, the one thing of the fog that we're all going through right now is just, it, it's fear, uh, it's, it's doubt, it's anxiety, it's a lot of things. And you know, I used to work for a company years ago that uh, the leader would come in and he'd have a meeting every Monday morning and but he would never share the direction of the company. He would never share the opportunities that were out there. What was going on? Where is the company going? And I feel that when, or, when organizations don't have a leader that communicates with a game plan, where are we going and where they fit into that game plan, I think that's when things fall apart. I'm not a big Bill Belichick or uh nick saban fan uh, I, I like them but i'm not they're like alabama or whatever i'm as you can see big lsu fanatic yeah but i do respect a great leader when they tell they tell their players you know do your job here's your job here's where you play a role here's where we need you here's the skill set that you have here's how you are part of this organization and this is how i'm going to need to depend on you and when people have that acknowledgement that they know that they've been that they're part of something and they know that they're in the boat, rowing the boat together and not being left behind. I think yeah. that's when people really can go, all right, we've got this. And, you know, I share with leaders all the time that, you know, right now, especially during this pandemic, I learned this from Katrina. I learned this uh, from, you know, uh, companies that here down here in Louisiana, when we went through all of that, that you, you communicate, and you make sure that when you do communicate, you're empathizing with your team. What are they yep. going through? What's their family going through? Where are you at right now? What can I do to help you? And then say, okay, here's where the organization's at. Too many people are out there that are part of organizations right now that are scared, you know, out of their mind. Absolutely. They don't know where they're, they're, they are They don't even know if they're going to have a job soon. They don't know anything because nobody's communicating with them. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, and I think by having that and, and having that uh, that vote of confidence of your leader, knowing that this person's gonna have that smile on their face, they're gonna bring us through this. I think that's that plays a large role, and I think a lot of leaders, um, it, it's something that I think, and Josh could probably could attest to this. I'm sure all of you could attest to this that a lot of us could work on. You know, a lot yeah. of us as leaders can say, you know, we've got to look in the mirror and say, okay. If I was in their shoes, what, what would I not want to hear, but what do I need to hear? You yeah. know, it, it's, it's, you know, so right now I think leaders need to be, if it's a Zoom call, if it's a phone call, if it's, you know, make sure it's a personal phone call to as many as you can yeah. within your organization. But at the same time, do a Zoom call once a week, even if it's nothing exciting. I, I give an example. My wife is a pharmaceutical rep. She's got 12 on her team throughout the country. They have they're doing every Friday morning or they have a meeting every Monday morning, every Friday morning, they're having a positive time together. Yeah. They're getting on these apps that they can all get on together and they're, they're playing games. I know this yeah. is kind of silly, but they're doing something to, to, to break the monotony and kind of keep the team together and keep that cohesiveness. 
and not let yeah. the team fall apart. And they're all kind of they're all communicating because right now as a pharmaceutical rep, things are definitely going to change in their world. They're not going to be able to walk in every doctor's office and things of that nature. So yeah, they're, you know, and that's the other thing is being able to share that vision of where you think the company is going to go. How can yeah. we pivot and, and say, okay, we're not going to be able to do this for quite some time, but here's where I think what we could do, you know, to, to keep the sales or keep the business going. So I yeah. think that's crucial when it comes to leading. Yeah, let me yeah. tell. Let me tell two quick ones, real quick. Two quick on it, and 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 this book pretty quick, pretty quick. Uh, but I'm lucky enough to be the helicopter pilot for Roger Penske, right? That's that's my one of my my job. You know, I I fly him in and out of races, and I've been lucky enough to be around him and watch him and the man's work ethic. I, I promise you, he would work circles around all three of us, and that's one of the main reasons why he is who he is. You know. But one of the things that I am so impressed with him, when he speaks, Roger Penske takes no credit for his organization. He gives the credit to all the people yep. that work for him. And it's so impressive to me every time that he speaks. He, uh, you know, I watched after we won the uh, Indy 500, we flew him down to a, an event and he spoke to, to the team and he gave the credit to the whole team, not himself. And then when he got the presidential award from presidential, the presidential uh, medal of freedom, he talked about, it's not him. He talked about the team, right? And he lifted up the team. Now, one other thing, cause my son is on here watching, he's a big part of convene too, but uh, to a quick story about him. When he was a freshman in high school, he went to, and this makes me so proud of him. When he was a freshman in high school, he went and tried out for soccer at his high school and he was little, very little at the time. And um, he got, the day of cuts, he got told that he was going to be on JV. The coach called later that night and said, no, nope, we're going to give you a chance to be on varsity. But let's back it up. What got him there? What got him the chance uh, to be there? In fact, he just made a comment right here. Um, and he said his, his team played a game of trivia today. So where he works. So there you go. So, um, but when he, was, when he was a freshman and they went out to do their preseason workouts, he and this other kid named Ethan Wells, who were freshmen, were in the front doing all their running. So they were they were in the front as freshmen. And I told him at the time, because I'm a retired Marine, I said, look, when you're a senior, you're not going to know when I'm watching. Right. And if I ever see you in the back when you're a senior, like all the seniors were that year, I said, it's coming to you. <laughs> That's just how it is. Leaders lead from the front. Right. So they won four games. His freshman year, they won about seven, maybe. His sophomore year, won about ten. His junior year, the year that he and Ethan were the captains and the seniors, preseason workouts, watched them. They led from the front. They did CrossFit all summer. They were 25-3, and three, and they won the state championship, that's right? Awesome. So that's leadership, right? And, and then he was a college you know, soccer player and, and a captain, but that's leadership, you know? And so if you're a leader, my message and that's, that, you know, that story right there, Josh, is that, and, and Ryan, if you're a leader, especially right now, more than any time, you got to be leading from the front. You got to be setting the example for your company and the people that work for you. So go ahead, Josh, I, I interrupted Oh, no, you. I, I, right. now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, no, I, th I think, and I think the, the, it's up to the leaders right now because the biggest problem with organizations and, and with staff is this lack of continuity, right? Because you've developed you developed a, a team atmosphere, especially even if you it's, it was a new team at the beginning of the year, you've developed these connections and these relationships and these ideas about what's going on with the organization. If you can, If you lose that continuity, um, you you lose a lot of not only uh, you know space to move forward right, but you lose your productivity, you lose profitability, yeah. and then when you come back, it's going to take a long time for you to build that back up again, right? It's just like anything else. If you if you ever you know if you dated some woman right, and y'all went on a few dates, and then y'all stopped dating for a while, you're going to start back at square one. You don't pick up on date six again, right? Like you got yeah. you got to you got to date them again, and so you leaders need to make sure that they're maintaining this continuity within their teams. And so I mean to circle it back around to a to an entrepreneurial role. Um, what I've been doing as an entrepreneur is I've been reaching out to a lot of my clients, especially my, my best clients, the ones I really like working with to their leadership. Be like, look, 
I want to jump back on. I want to help you and your team right now. And I, I'm doing most of it, you know, pro bono because they're scared. They're worried. These leaders don't necessarily have the right direction because they haven't been able to adapt because of some sort of company policy. But me, since yeah. I'm, I can pivot quickly, I can adapt. I'm happy yeah. to jump on and help them maintain that continuity because once we get back towards some semblance of normalcy, all of your clients, anybody that's looking to you for solutions is going to remember how you made them feel. Did you make them feel yeah. more at ease or more uneasy, right? Yeah. And, I mean, right. You, I've heard a lot, right? Oh, no, you, just, you have to find a pain point to sell. I think that's the exact wrong thing. You need to the, be the person that they see as the one providing the solutions, right? Yeah. And so Absolutely. right now is the perfect time, especially for any entrepreneur, right? Right now is the perfect time for you to be proactive in the way in which you're approaching your clients to tell them, hey, look, we're in this together, right? The But the only way we're going to weather this storm is that way, together. Let me help you in some sort of a yeah. way. And I think that's um, that's where a lot of the leaders in the world can maintain that continuity, right? Is, is by bringing somebody in that helps them kind of band back together and do those sorts of things. I think, I think playing games is phenomenal right now. I think yeah. any sort of team environment that you can create, I know most of it's digital, right? And virtual now, but I think those are so essential because it allows you to maintain those relationships. Even if it's a minimal maintenance, right? You're still maintaining yeah. those relationships, which is so important to the continuity of our businesses moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about a little bit about, um, uh, you know, shared learning. Let's talk about that and, and you know, and how, well, for me and Convene, we're pivoting to that, you know, it is a shared learning platform, right? So we've all talked about stories now, and we've shared some stories, um, but how important and how much do you, when you go out and look guys, I mean, you guys, like one of the questions we haven't got to is how do you teach people to be a, you know, a motivational speaker? How do you teach people to be to get where you are that's you know it's not exactly easy right um but how do you how do you get people there and how, what do you have to you know in the day and time frame now we can't just go out and speak we can't get in front of a crowd you know we can do it through this and through it through zoom and different uh facebook lives and different platforms but how can you bring that training world together what kind of you know and I'm, I'm i'm leading into a conversation about shared learning obviously but how do we how do we do that? How do we, how do we do that right now? Um, and how are you guys going to do it? I, I think uh, right now is an amazing time when it comes to training. I think the motivational speaking part, um, I think that it's going to evolve. We're going to, it's going to be a taste that people are going to have to get used to seeing speakers, you know, online, that kind of thing. But I think when it comes to training, I think that's a big thing. I just did a training last week for an organization, uh, salespeople all across the country, um, got great feedback on it. We use Zoom um, and they might have some other, some other platforms that are probably better out there, but Zoom. So anyway, I, I did a PowerPoint, but at the same time, I made it cohesive to where I'm not just talking. I've got, I've got questions I'm, I'm asking. I'm making sure that I have the list of everybody that's on that call. I'm asking them, what do they think? We talked about sales. We talked about, uh, how is sales going to look moving forward from this point on? Because most people can't go face to face. How can you sell? One of the biggest things is how are you going to be able to sell over the phone? How are you going to be able to sell yeah. over uh, a voice or over FaceTime or something of this nature? Um, that's, and it might not be for a long time, but I think it's going to be probably to the end of the year. I think this is going to be some of the avenues that we have to take. Yep. Uh, but I think Josh is on to something and, and I think it's a great opportunity right now to reach out to clients, to reach out to people and say, look, you know, you've got all your salespeople, all your customer service reps. I mean, I just called Zappos the other day and the lady answered and I was like, oh, are you guys at the office? She's like, I don't know. They, they've got it set up where it comes straight to our, our, you know, our house. I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. So people are working. Amazon's doing that right now too, where everybody's working out of their house as customer yeah. service reps. And so with that being said, I think it's a great opportunity to use. I, I think it's going to be a great opportunity moving forward for us that we're going to be able to use these types of uh, uh, tools to train people instead of having to go out and like fly across the country and all that kind of stuff. I think people are going to get used to this for quite some time. And I think it's a great avenue for trainers and speakers to, to get be able to get on these types of platforms and, and reach more people. I think it's going to be yeah. a great opportunity on that. And uh, yeah. as far as sharing information, I mean, you know, right now people are looking for this type of information. I think people are, uh, are, are you know, they, 
But one thing I'm trying to tell people right now is at this time, learn as much as you can. Watch as many, listen to many podcasts, watch videos, read, do whatever you can. So when you come out of this, you are, you know, what can, what is, what does the other side look like instead of sitting around eating, you know, cheese balls all day and bomb bombs all day watching, you know, the news. And I've seen people do it. I've actually got people that I coach that I can see the fear on their face because their sales are not where they want to be. And they are, they're not doing anything pro- yeah. positive and productive to move forward. I think some people are, and unfortunately they're stuck. They don't know. It's that fear that has just got them to where they don't know what to do next. So yeah. I think we could be a great asset to a lot of companies right now uh, with our information and the opportunity. I think it's a great opportunity to get with these companies and, and help them you know, guide and provide information for their, for their uh, staff. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I totally agree with that. I think that a lot of people, especially people that that have um, you know, I'll say normal nine to five jobs, that all of a sudden now they're not in the office, right? But they've created this complacency in the role that they have because it's just so easy to, you know, kind of shut it off, drive to work, sit in the desk and yeah. do the work and then go yeah. home. And now all of a sudden, like I'm I'm at home, right? It's easy to to get distracted. It's easy to not actually work. And I think a lot of companies, the ones I've talked to, um, the ones that are doing it well, right? They, they know how to keep their teams engaged. They know to, yeah. to be connecting with them on a, on a one to one basis. Um, but the other organizations, I mean, there's a fear there, and it, maybe it's not a fear of COVID nineteen. Maybe it's a fear of uh, dropping productivity, which is a huge thing, yeah. right? All of a sudden, like literally, like my kids aren't in school, right? I'm and I usually work <laughs> in the house, right? But I'm a lot less productive. Like if we were talking about marshmallows, I keep marshmallows now in my office and I, I actually ate them all, but now I keep candy corn <laughs> in my office because when my kids bust in here, when right. I'm on a, on a zoom or a Skype, I'm like, okay, and I throw them out mm-hmm. of the room. So they leave the room. Um, yeah. But I think a lot of organizations right now, that there is a fear out there that they're, that they're not uh, being as productive as they could be, or that their teams are not paying attention like they used to. And so, um, I've reached out to quite a few and said, look, now's the time to train your team, right? Not just exactly. train them, but now's also the time for you to be reaching out to the people that you serve, right? As, as an organization or your clients. And there's a lot of people that are feeling like, well, I don't want to reach out because it'll seem like I'm taking advantage of the situation, but it's not at all. I think there's a lot of people that are in fear that aren't, they don't know what's going on, but I found yeah. it very valuable to re- reach out to my clients proactively. Like, hey, look, we're all going through this. Here's something that I found that's valuable to me. Maybe you could use it. Maybe your team could use it. Feel free to share it with your team. I'm not. I'm not demanding business. I'm not trying to sure. exploit the situation, but I want them to know that I'm. I'm still here, and I know that you're still there. And the last thing we should do is is just shut off communication and be shut yeah. ins in, in our world. It, it, it's easy to do that, right? The second you get home, I can shutter the blinds and I can turn on the news and I can sit there in fear with my family and have you know somebody drop off groceries from the store. And then yeah. just just kind of wallow in this self pity. <laughs> the problem is we need to be looking towards the future, right? We need to be looking at what's going to happen in, in you know three months and six months, so that we yeah. can be those many steps ahead. Because if we're if we're wallowing in in the situation right now, we're just going to be depressed and overwhelmed and worried and, and full of anxiety. And if we're pining over you know two months ago when things were normal, right? We're just we're going to yeah. be more upset. But if we're looking towards the future, it allows us in this moment to take actions that's going to lead us there, right? Absolutely. So that we're not 10 steps behind everybody else that actually yeah, did take action catch during these times. Absolutely. Yeah, you're so right. I think training is great right now. Action, I mean, action is essential right now, right? Don't don't let your mental state atrophy during this, this time where we're all kind of shuttered in our homes. Yeah, absolutely. So two things on that is one, the last call we were on, you did give some marshmallows away. I witnessed it. I saw it happen. So <laughs> I, you are not lying. You're telling the truth. So <laughs> that is a true statement. So, but you're right. It, it, it is all about thinking about the future. If we get stuck right now and we're not thinking about the future and we're not training. And, and so like for me with convene is, Hey, you know what? It, it's a training platform. It's communication and collaboration platform where teams can come together and it is a learning management system and I'm giving it away for free as much as I can so people get on to use it because I know on the backside it's going to be growth for me and for convene and everybody overall right Um, so to me it's a good thing because uh, if we're training and we're really working together and we're learning from each other right we tell these stories we put people in scenarios we put people in situations I'm not the one with all the best ideas. I don't have all the best ideas in the world, but if I put us on a, in a situation and told a story or a case study or whatever, guess what? 
everybody's going to share their experience and knowledge within that. And we're all going to have that shared learning. And I might be reading Ryan's answer and I might be reading your answer, Josh. I don't know what your answer with inconvenience anonymous, but guess what? We're learning. And as leaders, I might be reading the people's answers that work for me. Again, don't know who it is, but I'm reading their answers. And guess what? I'm learning. Well, where are their answers coming from? Their answers are coming from their experience. Their answers are coming from where they are. You might have the guy or the lady that's been at the company for 40 years, right? She's answering off her their uh, 40 years of experience. But you have might have that new college student like my son who's just out there and he's talking about his books, what he's learned, the latest and greatest technology or whatever it might be, and they're contributing just as much. So if we engage in that shared learning project process right now during this time, maybe we can get up, you know, a little ingenuity and maybe we can come up with different ways to do business if we're leading and we're team leading and we're we're working together as a team. So I don't know what y'all think about well, that. That's, that's why I think convene about. is it's 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 so topical right now. And now you started building it 10 years ago, right? So you were obviously yeah. looking into the future anyway. But the reason yeah. it's so valuable right now is people are starved for that community, right? They used to be able to go yeah. to the office. They used to be able to meet with their clients. They used to be able to go to networking events, but they're starved for that community to tell them like, no, no, look, we're all experiencing these things and we're all still in business and we're all still trying to grow and to thrive. How can we do this? And the cool thing is, is you develop the platform, right? That allows yeah. people to not only learn what they don't know, right? But to meet with people that have the knowledge Right, that that is is hopefully uh, congruent with what they're trying yeah. trying to accomplish. So I, that's why I think it's just such an apropos moment for yeah. your platform. That's I, and Ryan, I'll, I'll ask you on that, Ryan, because you as a speaker, both of you, Josh and Ryan, as a um, as a speaker, what's your leave behind? Right, we can go into places and we can speak, and when we walk in and we speak, because I've, I've I've watched videos, you know, of, of both of you. You know, and I can see the crowd, all right? They're excited. They like what you're saying. But how do we keep them engaged? What's our leave behind three weeks later? You know, how do we keep them engaged? How do we keep them learning? You know, so what are some of your thoughts on that, uh, Ryan? And by the way, Ryan, um, I do got to ask this. Before you answer this question, did we see who the first pick of the NFL draft was? I just need to know. There's a gentleman by the name of Joey Burrow. He went to a little school by, uh, I think, LSU, I think he went to. Was he any good? Uh, and, I don't really. I'm not really familiar with him. He had a couple of couple of throws, a couple of passes. I think he uh, won a little ring. I'm not uh, sure, you, but you know. Would you happen to be an LSU fan? I can't tell. <clears throat> no, not at all. I wouldn't know. <laughs> <clears throat> I was before this. This. Uh, I would say I, if if I could show if I was able to show the room, man. I've got LSU stuff for years. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big sports <laughs> fanatic, and and I think that comes a long way. Uh, sports to me, uh, even LSU, all of these different things that I watch, it's really cool to see where these people that those are great learning tips for me. These people that that are coaches and you know people that get on TV. But uh, go back to your he question. loves tigers more than Carol Baskin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really do. Actually, she makes me sad. I, I really, I think we need to free, free the Tiger King. I think yeah. we need to free him. <laughs> I think uh, I think he's been wrongfully put in jail. I think we need to, yeah. uh, you know, put him on the circuit. Get, get, dude, he'd be a great motivational speaker. Yeah, he probably would get a, a big crowd. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> He'd be yeah. like your last guest. This is how I killed somebody <laughs> or got somebody yeah. killed. <laughs> wow. So, um, so go back to your first question. I totally forgot what it was. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's my, I'm going to take responsibility. I'm not going to lay blame. I'm going to take responsibility for getting us off the rails there. Yeah, I got, I got. Thrown no, off leave behind. Out. We're, we're talking about oh, leave behind. We're yeah. talking about how to keep people motivated and keep people on track and, 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 and get you as a motivational speaker back, right. Or as a trainer back, how do you keep them engaged? Right. Well, one and of the things that I, yeah, I learned a long time ago, I have a really cool thing. It's a get off your attitude card. And yeah. uh, I learned this at one of my first national speakers association meetings. This lady would leave a lead behind where it's a card. And, uh, and uh, well, let me, I told on myself to you real quick. <clears throat> There's a couple of things that I've got. So the first thing, this is an old one, I've had it for years. So it's a, it's a get off your attitude card. Yeah, this cool. is when the QR code was cool, the text messaging and all that. I don't have that anymore. 
but I have a, I have a get off your attitude uh, uh, definition. But on the back, I always have everyone write down what are the three habits that they want that they learn from my seminar. What are the three yeah. things that they want to take away? So I give them a few minutes, have it write it down. I get everybody to take their wallet out, put it in their wallet, put it in their purse. And the reason why is the lady that that gave me this idea was she told me, she said, Ryan, the next time someone goes in their purse or their wallet to get their credit card, you're going to see your card. And it's going to be a yeah. reminder of get off your attitude. And I can't tell you how many people have, have showed me their card. But also, too, I have another card that I, I leave out on everybody's desk or everybody's table or chair, wherever I'm speaking at. And I get them to fill out their information if they want to stay in touch with me, a newsletter. Um, and it's also a great way to ask for referrals. I always get major referrals after a you know, speaking presentation and thing of that nature. But I put them on a, just an email campaign after I leave and I, I have videos and things of that nature yeah. that, uh, that I leave behind. And uh, because I'm a big thing, you know, we, we call ourselves motivational speakers. I think people get that uh, that name a little. Uh, I think there's a lot to that name when you say you're a motivational speaker. Some people don't understand it. I think what Josh and I do, and I think what, I, what quite a few speakers do now, and I, I wish there was another word for it. And I'm sure Matt, you're like the same way. It's we give a lot of meat on the bone. It's not yeah. just hey, let me get you all excited, and you walk out of the door, and you're not, you know, oh, I'm going to go do this. It's more than that. It's the stories. It's the the tips. Yeah. It's the yeah. the things that they can walk away with. I mean, I've got people that I've got, you know, notebooks and stuff that that people will walk away with with notes and things of that nature. So there's a lot of leave behinds there. But I find that um, if you can get grab their email address, grab their phone number, do a text campaign, email campaign, things of that nature that they sign up for, uh, they they really enjoy that type of thing. So uh, yeah. it really really helps build a community. And um, I've, built a, I've, I've built a get off your attitude community over the years where people still to this day, and another thing I give away a lot is the get off your attitude bracelet. This yeah. thing has taken off. I mean, I, I had this before uh, I did the book. And uh, one of the things I used to do, I went to all the Smoothie Kings and GNCs here in the New Orleans area, yeah. and they would sell these bracelets. I've sold thousands of these get off your attitude bracelets. That's and cool. can't tell you how many people that, you know, still have the bracelet and book wasn't even out yet. And I still have people that come up to me all the time. I've still got people, I've got football players for LSU and the Saints and stuff that still wear the bracelet. That's and really so cool. uh, it's just a great reminder of the message of we've all got a choice to, to stay positive. Yep. So, all right, we're up at an hour. That went kind of quick. So, um, so um, I want to tell you that Ryan uh, is one of the keynote speakers for the Entrepreneurs Unite, Back to the Basics. That'll be May 4th, 5th, and 6th. And so is Josh. Uh, Ryan's topic is increase your productivity through positivity. Uh, Josh will be talking about the story means money, crafting a narrative that builds your business. So please join us on uh, May 4th, 5th, and 6th. You can go to convenecommunities.com and get information about that. Sign up for that. Again, talking about emails, we'll send you emails with the reminder with the links. And in the meantime, real quick, just close us out. Uh, Josh, tell people where they can find you now if they want to uh, look you up. Yeah, you can go ahead and check me out on my website. It's joshuamevans.com, or you can hit me up on any social media platform. It's at enthusiastic you. Okay. Y-O-U. And I'll get that information and we'll make sure that we post that. And um, go ahead and Ryan, tell me, uh, tell them where they can find you. Yeah, my, the website I have up right now is ryanclow.com. Getoffyourattitude.com is being built. But if you want to Google Get Off Your Attitude, you will see Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, all the all the social media platforms, Instagram, everything. Uh, definitely join. That's a great way to stay uh, in touch with me and uh, just get all the tips, ideas, and things that we kind of shared tonight. We I do a lot of that stuff on those different uh, platforms. Yeah. And so, look, uh, here's the deal. You can find us at convenecommunities.com. You can go into Convene, the application uh, app itself, go into the Entrepreneur, Entrepreneurs Unite, can you speak, uh, back to the basics. And both these guys have a, a group in there that we'll be building them out over the next couple of weeks. But, again, I really appreciate both of you. I look forward to learning from you and, uh, you know, continuing this relationship. You know, and I look forward to just really looking at both of you and, and helping me grow as a uh, mentor for me. So, 
Thank you so much, Stizo, as always. In the background, I appreciate you. Uh, Lose the radio is where it's at. So uh, everybody have just a great night, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next Thursday night.